I'd like to introduce a few helpers. Uh, these are my helpers. And uh, <laughs> I like to do this one because I think it's really cool. So see if you can, I'd like you to notice the white smoke. See that white smoke? Well, I don't see it very well, but watch this. Now, especially, watch this. See that? Isn't that cool? Okay, maybe you don't think so, but I really do. <laughs> you saw it? Okay. Now, by the way, this is Igor. It's Igor, Master. It's Igor. Uh, because I like to show other candles also, and I don't know. Okay, I like to show edible candles because when I was working in the mines, instead of wearing a headlight, I'd like to take a candle. When I got hungry, I like to eat my candle. Huh? Well, that's why I like that now. And then, and then, no, oh, hold on, hold on. No, no, don't, no, Igor. Where's my can? I want it. Okay, this is a bag of methane. Uh, you can get it at Hasbro Toys. <laughs> bag of methane. Uh, it's right next to the bag of glass. Now, Amanda, come on up. Stop. Now I'd like you to keep pressing. Put your hand under that. Put your hand under there. Under? And get it on. Get it. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Get it on my hand. Get it on your hand. Okay. Stop. Stop. Okay. <laughs> now I think you'll be okay. <laughs> right? Okay, she said she wants another. Uh, <laughs> you want, give me a little press here. Yes, man. Another press. This time, get it, see if you can get it on top of your palm. Like that? If you can get it all above your hands, then I'll light it from the top. <laughs> get it all above your hand if possible. Okay, we'll try that. Now, I'm going to try to give you a hand here. Yeah. Can I light you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll light myself later. Wow. All right, all right. All That's right, exciting, Master. <laughs> okay, put that back in the corner over there. I cover, uh, and I have a, a glass of ice. So, why is the can wet? I'd like to tell you my analogy for why the can's wet. Uh, there's uh, water molecules in the atmosphere, humidity. When the molecule, water molecules are flying around at room temperature, they're going like this. And these water molecules do feel some attraction for each other, but their movement is too high for them to, uh, to show that attraction. They just run right by each other. But I said, uh, when, when, the, when the temperature cools down and the water molecules get to a cold spot, they slow down. And when they slow down enough, the two water molecules can show their attraction and get together. So that's what happens with condensing water. Now my analogy for that is, is this, and I have to use somebody from when I was in school. If I was running as fast as I could, and I was going a thousand miles an hour, and I was pretty fast. Uh, and I was running fast, and uh, Marilyn Monroe and Debbie Fine <laughs> were sitting next to each other right here. I'd be going so fast, I wouldn't even notice. <laughs> but when the temperature goes down and I get slower, and I look at Debbie Fine, yeah, that's the only one I'm looking at. <laughs> Then my attraction can take over. And that's when we coalesce, if that's what you call it. Now, this, uh, so, so this, most everything here I've done before over the years, uh, you know, once or twice a day in a class. My, dem my, my mantra used to be demo a day. And uh, I like people to, to learn by touching things. Uh, this is a non OSHA approved thing. Don't do anything with this. These are bare wires, okay? So, Sue here? <laughs> okay, so this is now, all right, and I want to show you uh, about the conductivity of water. Um, get that bag of sugar and bring it over here. Well, Conductivity water. Maybe this thing isn't working. I don't want the sugar yet. I want the salt right now. I got the salt. <laughs> I 
a little salt in the water. Connectivity of salt water. Okay. So, uh, salt. <laughs> okay. And the, the learning point here is that salt is an ionic compound, and in water it dissociates into positive and negative ions, and those are what carry the electric current. Now, here. <laughs> hey, give that to me. Yagar, give me that. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, this, I'd like to show you the conductivity of sugar. So, thank you. Thank you. This is water. Now I'll put some sugar into it. I'll put a lot of sugar. Hold that. And set it down. Conductivity of sugar. Okay, no conductivity at all. And the point here is sugar is a molecular compound. When it dissolves, it does dissolve, it doesn't conduct. And so I have faith. The first time I did this, I had faith, but I was a little scared. <laughs> but if I leave my finger in too long, there might be a little salt come off. But right now, I'm okay. So when I take a bath, I can listen to the radio <laughs> on the edge of the bathtub. <laughs> Unless I've just been to hot yoga. <laughs> okay, dump that up too. Okay. So that's my conductivity. The difference between molecular and ionic compounds and the idea that water doesn't conduct much electricity by itself. Okay. Henry's law about the solubility of a gas in a liquid, that's aqueous, is proportional to the pressure of the gas above the liquid. So uh, this is the, the uh, recipe on the back of the root beer, root beer extract can't anymore. Okay, that's about right. You may not believe it, but it takes that much sugar and even more. Yum. <laughs> but dry eyes, don't do this at home. Because if you swallow the dry eyes, your stomach will explode. Easy, master. Easy. Now, you can't handle this too much, but a little bit. Oh, now. you need to put the rest of the water in. Where's the water? Where's the water? Don't pick it up. Don't pick it up. Oh, you got gloves on. <laughs> You're okay. Okay, throw it in. Don't make a mess. Don't make a mess. Okay. Let's put a little more in. Okay, now we'll try to keep some of the pressure inside. Now, you see the little holders on this? This is this, the dangerous part. Uh, you can tell this pressure cooker uh, doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the, the excess pressure is supposed to come out here. <laughs> then it comes out here. <laughs> okay, that helps. I don't know, you ready to start? I'll let you start first. Go ahead, fastest one. You gotta hit start. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, nice try, kid. Anyway, nice try. Nice try. Okay. Now. Now, did it? Okay, when you're ready. <laughs> you mark, set, go. Okay, okay. Now, what I was trying to teach with this demo uh, was nothing. But uh, <laughs> if it was physics, it would have been centripetal force and uh, the uh, imaginary centrifugal force. And if you, if you spin it a little bit and get a little tunnel, then the air can get in. If you spin it too much, 
there's too much water up the sides and what comes out is too wide and it slows it down. So you gotta spin it just enough to get the air tunnel up there. If you ever have to do that, you know. <laughs> uh, kill the lights. Nitrocellulose. The first time I ever got nitrocellulose, a Boeing engineer died. Let's hope it happened again. But a Boeing engineer <laughs> died, and he uh, he was like a rocket scientist, and he had a garage full of nitrocellulose, six six cans of nitrocellulose, and uh, I got it. <laughs> Did I give you a can? <laughs> I don't ask. I won't ask what you did with it. <laughs> And so uh, I found this uh, source of guncon. It's just really cool. It's nitrated cellulose. And so it's just cool because it does this. All right. You want to see it again? <laughs> I like fire. You, know? you like it more than that? I don't know. Hey, okay, I had a friend come over one time, and a uh, friend, and uh, he was uh, uh, selling the Amway, and uh, so uh, he, he took my, uh, he took some of my uh, Drano, which is good old sodium hydroxide, and he uh, um, put it in a styrofoam cup, then he took some in an Amway drain cleaner and put it in a styrofoam cup. And uh, I would have been impressed if I didn't know this, but uh, you do it this way. It's a little acetone, organic solvent, kind of a universal solvent. Oh, styrofoam. I got a little too much acetone here. Now acetone is a fingernail polish remover, so you can tell it just ruined my nail job. <laughs> Actually, one time in a science district meeting, thanks Igor. <laughs> one time we, we spent, we had a meeting on safety and uh, uh, <laughs> Okay, right away you knew I wasn't interested. But uh, as the uh, meeting went along and they were looking at, at different gloves you could use for different solvents and they were got down to acetone and they were saying, well, should we use a type, type F series three or should we go with a type G? And everybody was kind of, well, well, you could try this. And I was going, it's fingernail polish for more. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't quite get, get why we had to have that. Oh, there's something in there. Just stir, stir that one up, Igor. This was going to be Roy G. Biv. And Roy G. Biv are the colors of the rainbow. Red, <laughs> not quite. Orange, yellow, green, blue, and indigo. Yeah, I know, they put the seventh color in there, violet. I never believed it. I always believed there were six colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purplish. And uh, I think the ancients just thought that seven was a heavenly number. And they had to put a seventh color in. It rhymes with heaven. You gotta rinse it off each time you stir. But uh, before I throw this away, I wanna make sure they're not, not to uh, rinse this baby off so I don't contaminate between them. Okay. All right. Let's see. This. It's just my rinse solution. Another rinse solution. Another rinse so I don't contaminate that this uh, blue. And then a little rinse so I don't contaminate the violet. Okay. So those are cleaned up. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Yeah. Igor, what are you doing? Nothing, Master. Okay. Uh, okay, where's my stuff? <laughs> One of you was with me when we found it. We found it in a little bottle. It's a little bottle. We found it. A little white bottle. I'm sorry, there's so much. Igor! 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 It's Igor, Master. <laughs> what did you do? I just stirred it. That's all. <laughs> hey, listen. Shoot, Igor. Oh, man. Igor. About uh, saturated solutions, uh, dilute solutions, and super saturated solutions. Uh, now, if I have a, a beaker with a bunch of salt crystals on the bottom, and it's been sitting there for a year with the salt crystals still on the bottom and water above, uh, I ask the students, uh, is it saturated or super saturated? And they say super saturated. Well, it's not. It's saturated because the crystals on the bottom uh, keep the excess from collecting up above. Uh, this solution, however, here is super saturated. You can't tell by looking that it's super saturated, uh, but it happens to be super saturated sodium acetate. And there is a formula for sodium acetate. You see on the end of the sodium acetate, there's dot 3H2O. That means there's three water molecules in the crystal, in the solid crystal. Uh, when you heat it up, those water molecules are driven off. That dot, the bond of the water to the sodium acetate isn't as strong. It comes off and it dissolves the rest of the crystals. Uh, when the substance cools back down, those waters don't go back into the crystal. In fact, crystallization doesn't occur. This system here is a forbidden, can you call it a forbidden state? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's really violating, violating the laws of nature. And so I'm going to carefully take a little crystal and seed like cloud seeding. And we'll see what happens here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Feel that. Feel that. Feel the bottom. Room temperature, right? Room temperature? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Take that. All right. So there is the crystal. Of <laughs> now feel that. Put your hand around that. Oh, it's hot. It is hot. In fact, it gives off because in order to reverse the process, you add heat. When the process goes the way it did, it gives off heat. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so here's our, our Coke can. Got a little water in the bottom. And I like to teach about the atmosphere. So all I'm doing here is heating the water up. So I'm going to heat this water up. Uh, By heating the water up inside this can, the air is expanding and coming out. When the water starts to boil, the water vapor will start filling the can. Uh, eventually, the can will have very little air left, and it'll be full of water vapor. And so the purpose of this is to show the, the kind of the weight uh, of the atmosphere. Now this can, I measured the, uh, the square inches on this can, the surface area of this can, it's about 450, no, 30 square inches. And the pressure of the atmosphere is about 15 PSI, 15 pounds per square inch. So if I had to have all the air out of this can and just figure all the weight that's pressing in on this can, it's going to be, what's that, 450 pounds. So we're going to see the effect of 450 pounds all around this can. And it'll just be a little implosion. <laughs> As soon as I hear it boil, I gotta drive all the air out, the water out. Cool, you can do this at home. You can do this on, <laughs> you can do this on your uh, stove top. Let's take this can. Cold water over water. here. And the can didn't survive. Okay. So that's the atmosphere on a can. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you don't have to. Okay, give it a try. Take it over. Get over. When you get over here, tip it upside down. Dump it in. Dump it in. Go in. Put it under water. Put it under water. Oh, there you go. I just asked uh, uh, a university student what you think might happen on liquid nitrogen. Um, the can will be smaller. The can will be smaller. That's one, one guess. How about a, a Stanford graduate? Okay. The can will expand. Yeah, there's a real far out idea. <laughs> You didn't, didn't you go to Berkeley? <laughs> Anybody else have an idea what this can is going to do? Anybody know what this can is going to do? 
It's going to okay. shatter. It's going to get brittle. You saw brittle. what it did in water. It's going to get brittle and shatter. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Nothing, because, you know why? <laughs> it's obvious and why, probably now that you've seen it, why nothing happened. Because as soon as the water vapor in, in the water situation, as soon as the water vapor hit the water, water condensed and there was nothing left in the can, so you had a vacuum. When the nitrogen was in uh, here, when the water vapor hit the nitrogen, the water vapor also condensed very rapidly. But at the same time, the nitrogen filled the can, immediately filled the can, because nitrogen is even more vaporous than water. All right? Okay. Uh, one reason nature abhorred a vacuum was that God could not e e inhabit a vacuum. So it was kind of went against the church teaching about God being omnipresent. But he couldn't be in a vacuum, so they thought. At any rate, uh, we now know that vacuums, we can make vacuums very easily, and we just made some with a pop can. I'd like to show another example of the pressure of the atmosphere when you take out, uh, fill a, a container with water vapor and then uh, condense the water vapor. So I'm going to boil this water. Uh, what's next? There's the water vapor coming out the top. Invert. Water vapor condenses. Nothing's left in the flask. There we go. Okay. This will slow the air molecules down so much that the liquid nitrogen, the liquid nitrogen will cool the air molecules so much that they will not only slow down, but they'll very nearly stop. Yeah. Where's my clamps? So, these molecules have slowed down so much that they've stopped. Now, as they warm up, they will start moving again. Uh, the uh, boiling point of liquid nitrogen is about 196 degrees negative centigrade. And so, uh, below 196 degrees, uh, the, the oxygen in the nit this is negative 196. So the nitrogen and the oxygen molecules slow down to their uh, freezing point, or their uh, condensation point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my test coil? Okay, this is a, say it carefully, Tesla coil. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Don't try. Don't try, Igor. <laughs> So this Tesla coil will uh, zap things. Uh, you see this? And uh, if you do this, what this will do to the atmosphere is something like showing those two equations. You make a free radical oxygen, which will uh, atom, which will combine with another oxygen molecule to make an ozone molecule. So uh, if you smell this, the reason I do this is I want people to experience different pollutants. So. You smell it, it's a little bit of ozone. <laughs> and it's not good for you, but uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit will hurt you. Now, the other thing about this is, would you like to participate in this one? Okay. Okay. Just grab onto this. Hold here. I'm going to have your dad do it. Because your daughter is such a uh, brave. Hold on to it. Nothing will happen. Don't let go. <laughs> you hear it? It's on. Yes. No problem. Yes. Now touch somebody. Uh, now I think you're too grounded. I think it's going out your feet. rear end. <laughs> you got it, huh? Okay. See if now let go. Now touch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, no problem, no problem. Now I'd like to show you one of the things you can do with this. Uh, 
it's the arc that hurts you. When you get a shock, it's uh, the arc that, that stings you. Um, if you, the electricity goes through you and it's just this much electricity, it's not very much. But, and so that's why when I go through a bank or a dry day and touch a doorknob, I take my keys out and touch the doorknob with my keys so the art goes to the keys, not to my finger. And then I don't feel it. Now, I'll show you what I, you can use this for. <laughs> um, I once had a wart, and I thought, instead of freezing the wart, I'm gonna just electrocute. electrocute it. Ooh, it just went through my finger into the wall. Oh. <laughs> Let me lean on you, John. I mean, uh, <laughs> sorry. Trying to get, I got some kind of little thing down here. Ow, I don't like that though. Uh, <laughs> now some people don't mind it. If you don't mind it, would you come up and show us? Hold your hand up. <laughs> no problem? That's weird. It's just weird. There are not many people like you. <laughs> Okay. Now I did have somebody that took it on the tongue. Oh, what? No. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> somebody want to come up here and do that? You'd be, you'd be in a movie. You'd be in a movie. Uh, I wish we had the guy from Kiss here. <laughs> no, I had somebody do that before. Uh, somebody even said, "I'll take it on the eyeball." Now touch her. <laughs> okay, that's good. that's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> undo that. I don't like to see them in real life, but I like to see where they come from. So lead nitrate decomposes according to that equation, gives off nitrogen dioxide. And one reason I like to do the nitrogen dioxide is because it leads me to the discussion of other nitric oxides. And we'll see about those in just a minute. Okay, and you can see why the equation balances as it does. The lead again, went from a plus two to a plus four, so it lost two electrons. The nitrogen went from a plus five to a plus four, so it gained one electron, but there are two nitrogens, so there are two electrons gained. So there's the balance in the electrons. And in the sulfur uh, potassium chlorate reaction, get the next one, uh, I showed you the oxidation numbers, how it balances also. So that's important when you're taking 12-12. Now, a little bit of potassium chlorate goes a long way when there's a little bit of sulfur around. That's a lot. I, I think there's some sulfur left in here. There we go. Oh, oh yeah. I hate the sulfur dioxide, but I like to pop. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> that's a pop. Oh. <laughs> and uh, a white drowning and a blue drowning, just because it's kind of interesting. And so, if you're ever gonna breathe helium, realize that a breath of helium feels just like a breath of air. You go, ah, but it's not air has no oxygen, and so if you're ever going to breathe helium, do it once. Don't do it twice. Let me get rid of this. And you always think of something to say. Had people in class before tried the helium and they, <laughs> yeah. and that's all they said. Um, I wish I knew the SPU song. Does anybody know it? From, <laughs> I know this Stanford song. From, okay. From the mountain to the bay. Now I just haven't taken a breath yet. 
Now I've taken my second breath. You see my breath has gotten lower. Now I've taken my third breath. My voice is a little lower. Now, you can, you can get a little lightheaded. Here's the problem. If you have a big enough balloon and you do the helium and you do this and do another helium, you feel like you're breathing, but you're not. And your brain doesn't know you're not breathing until the brain shuts down. And so, uh, if you're ever drowning and you, uh, if you're ever going to try to deep dive, here's what deep divers do. They hyperventilate first. They get rid of all the carbon dioxide. They get hypocapnia, low carbon dioxide. Then they dive down, take a big breath of oxygen, dive down. The carbon dioxide does not build up. And what makes you want to breathe is excess carbon dioxide building up. So if you get rid of all your carbon dioxide, take a big breath of oxygen, you can stay underwater longer because the carbon dioxide doesn't force you to breathe. The problem with that is you have a shallow water drowning because you run out of oxygen. But it's an easy way to go. <laughs> the alternative is you don't hyperventilate. You go down, you can't reach the surface, you run out of, you build up carbon dioxide. You still got oxygen, but you build up carbon dioxide. You, all of a sudden, you have to breathe. And that's when you breathe. And if you drown after that, that kind of blue drowning, that's when laryngospasm sets in and you take a breath, but your trachea shuts down and you get the water in your stomach. So interesting, morbid ideas. <laughs> You see that, and then you see that this. Okay. The calcium carbide gives off. Here's where I'm worried about the smoke detectors. And I just like to demonstrate this. It's cool. Uh, uh, just oh shoot. Oh, I guess it's okay. <laughs> it really was supposed to burn up because Igor brought me the wrong alcohol. Cyborg, <laughs> I'm sorry. And so, now I need a, I need a bigger bill. Somebody have a, oh, I don't, I'm not going to use a bigger bill. I'm going to get this done. This, uh, light, where's the lighter? Okay. Come out here. Turn some lights down. No, I'm not going to do the bill. Uh, this is 70% alcohol, 30% water. Water is a great, uh, high, uh, highly uh, absorbs a lot of heat. It has a high heat capacity. And to show you the heat capacity of water, like, like that, just hold it up, hold it up in the air. Press your thumb forward. Okay. Hi, Gar. Put it out, sir. Oh. Oh, I got you. Sorry. 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 But don't do that. Don't do that. Why not? You'll hurt yourself. I'll show you again. Sorry, son. Anyway, there's so much water in this that you know, you get absorbs a lot of the energy. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that's it. Put it that So let me tell you though. You don't, don't try that at home. And, uh, or here. <laughs> and don't do it with gasoline. 70% alcohol. You can still burn yourself up. So, really, I'm a professional. And, uh, what's the name? Methanol. Methanol. Now these are plastic, I don't want to burn them, so turn the lights down. Saturate the vapor in there, put a little excess out, and
That's real similar, huh? Not that. <laughs> Ooh, gotcha. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing happened. Where's the top of that one? That round plug. Combustible. I need to do this because we've got to get to kinetics because the kinetics one I spent the more time on. It's combustible. Okay. And if you, if you give it more surface area by, I don't know if you can see those, that powder coming down. Well that, those are very fine particles. And if you do those fine particles, you get a high rate of combustion. <laughs> Feel the heat. Feel the heat, baby. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, listen, keep going, keep going. Tube, I'm not going to do the tube. And I'll drop this gum in it. Now, in my stomach, this gum would take uh, a few hours to, well, maybe 24 hours to digest. Uh, we're going to digest this gum in just uh, 60 seconds or less. So you'll see the energy content of a half a piece of gum. Now I'm going to take it over by that fan when it's ready to go. <laughs> oh yeah! This is where I worry about the fire code. Uh, don't, don't blow it up. Don't blow it up. <laughs> blow it down. Okay. All right. So, great reaction. Manganese 4 oxide, MnO2, is a catalyst that catalyzes decomposition. Come on now. Abra, Cadabra, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Now, next. Pick it up and just start swirling. So, everybody's got to pour at the same time. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody's got to be ready. I'm worried about Igor. <laughs> Igor. Igor. Okay, get it ready. Get it ready, Igor. Okay, start the music. Pour. Hold it on the top so we can all see it. Igor, Igor. It's a great song. Now you know you don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> it's called the clock reaction. And I had to take the, uh, the formulas off the board. But I know it's not going to work perfectly, but it, I hope it's close. Now I can tell you, you're going to have to go for about 40 seconds at least. Once you see a change, you can stop swirling. The music will be an indicator. Next. Didn't work. Is that the one that had the other one in? Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. 
<laughs> it, we had a little problem with our starts. Oh! <laughs> okay, hit him <them> down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, that was, I was surprised. I was surprised. <laughs> oh, man, you don't believe how much work that was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what we call them pop bottles, huh? <laughs> now, I thought that one was not made so well. <laughs> you want to do it? <laughs> this one I thought was made at a better uh, ratio, a closer to two to one ratio. Turn the lights off this time. Are you okay, uh, Igor? I, 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 uh, Igor? <laughs> okay. <laughs> next, next. Okay. <laughs> now, this balloon here is a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. This balloon here is just oxygen. These balloons here are hydrogen. Now, um, I know that's right. If I lit an oxygen balloon, if this room were full of oxygen, and I did this. And you know what 90% of my students have said? The room would go up. Well, here's a balloon full of oxygen. And it popped. And smell the clean oxygen. Oxygen itself, it just supports combustion. But it doesn't hurt. It just makes this burn five, you know, a lot brighter, that's all. You guys ready? Did the dollar bill come down? If you have uh, 100 kjoules of energy given off in one second, that uh, that would be one uh, kilowatt of power. If you had one, one, uh, I say 1,000. Kjoule, or one megawatt of power. 1,000 kjoules of energy given off in a tenth of a second, that would be uh, 10,000 kilowatts, 10 times as much power. Same energy, less time is more power. That hot balloon full of hydrogen took, uh, I don't know, a couple tenths of a second to react. This balloon has oxygen mixed with the hydrogen. It will react in less time. And therefore, this is going to be kind of loud. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's that's about all I got time for. Uh, <laughs> <thank you. laughs> I would like to say. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me say a couple words about teaching. Teaching is a great profession. It's really hard, and uh, I got to teach at some great places, culminating at SVU. And people always ask, uh, you know, don't you love it? Don't you love it, SVU? You were in high school, and I said, I liked it all. Although I hated sometimes, I loved it most of it, and. Uh, teaching is about loving students, and at both places I got to, I got to feel like I was doing God's leading. I felt like there was a calling, and it was a ministry, and coming to SPU at the end of the, the career was a great thing. So, I really like it. Thank you for coming.
my desk. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, thank you for coming, and uh, good luck in the rest of the year for you students. And I'll see you in Poland next summer, and I see a student from 1989, a student from 1986, another one from 86, and uh, my kids are here, and so, and it's great to see you, you current students. And faculty, good to see you all. Bring your kids here. And so, uh, anyway, have a great night. It was fun. <laughs> root beer. Hey, we got root beer. And uh, if you like root beer, you can carefully come up with some. Actually, I'm going to taste it. I'm going to taste it. To make sure it's not cold. It's not exquisite. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's root beer. <laughs>